Oh, nice. From the other, yeah, just kind of as an add on. So, that's pretty Whoa. Cool. You got some pretty good words. It's a boy. Yeah. yeah. No wonder it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder it hurt. To... So, all this is just granular tissue. It'll... So, when this heals, this will heal together. You'll have a normal looking toe without the ingrown. Wow. So, what we're gonna do no is. No wonder it hurts. So yeah, bad. it hurts. I mean, you could only see about a millimeter. I only took off a millimeter of what you could see. So, this is a curette. We're just gonna make sure everything is clean back here. It helps roughen up that germinal matrix as well, because that's what we're trying to kill. Okay, it's nice and clean. All right. I'm gonna put in a phenol here. I will. <laughs> yeah, you will. I mean, it's not that interesting, but there's there's some, not just the in-office ones, but we do the ones in the OR, and we try and show people some of the new technologies that are out there. I keep on meaning to go on one, but I um, keep on forgetting. I was good until it was live. Does that hurt, Doug? No, it's good, bro. All right, that worked really well that way. Hold on. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Dude, oh. I cannot believe this. <laughs> uh, Doug, he's got this big, massive cyst on his back, and Taylor's popping it for him right now. We're sending you live stream. More like milking it, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Let's do one more of that last round. <laughs> you think it come back? <clears throat> what did you say? As long as we get it all out, I don't think so, but. Yeah, it is. They've got to be awesome. <gasps> oh! Did you see that? I knew it was in there. More. Seriously, there's there. more? Taylor could just feel, feel it. Feel it. The pimple papa. So now the next question is, how much do you think Dr. Pimple Popper makes? What? You ready to change industries? <laughs> You've never done this in your story, huh? What? What did you see? What did you think you see at all? Dude, it's like coagulating now. You're getting out coagulation. It's a little coagulation. That was a big gush, gush of crap. Oh, the poison probably like that. Need to get some peroxide. Yeah. Alcohol. 
be all right. I don't think you want to clean this thing with hand yeah. sanitizer, do you? Oh, it's just alcohol. Yeah, put it on the guy. I actually got to get him back to you, child, because he's in a substract. <laughs> Maybe we could do the Texas. I just got to ask. Sorry, Doug, I'm really beating on you. Oh, you see that? Yeah. You're just coming from you're just coming from all angles, bro. That's good. <laughs> dude, like dude, maybe you should go like four inches out and squeeze towards it, you know? Yeah. Dude, you got some more gloves, you want me to help? I'm getting sweaty. Alright. Dude. The gloves are down there on Jacob's toolbox. Doug, I think that's it, buddy. Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna wipe this off. Doug, when's your next load? Tonight? Alright, man. I'm making it one shot. Here, here, here. Put them in this box. Put them in this box. Really? Yeah. Alright, are we done? It's the only way to do it. We're done? Stop with the. Oh my. Oh, that's disgusting. Okay, that hurts. You big baby. Is what she did. What the fuck? Okay, let's see. So this patient has had a evolving inflamed epidermal cyst over the course of the last how long now? Um, since it's been inflamed? Yeah. Uh, about a month. A month, eh? The problem she had is nobody wanted to open it up and the plastic surgeon didn't want to see this either directly. And the problem with is we can't remove this because it's infected. So we're gonna to have to just see if we can get it to drain. Um, so we're gonna put some anesthetic in. The problem with this is lidocaine works on an acid base mechanism. So the anesthetic is a little bit acidic and the basic tissues usually um, convert that to more of a neutral substance, which is then soluble into the actual tissues. When there's an infection like this, it's also acidic. So the anesthetic doesn't work as well. So we're going to inject some deep and see if uh, it'll take a little bit. Can feel a poke here? Poke. Maybe a little pressure. Now I try to get behind this cyst, but if I'm into it, you'll see that pressure starts exerting the cyst, and those will start to pressure forth. It looks like I'm underneath it still. Oh, you can see she's having pressure, back pressure. You okay? Yeah, something's dripping down my face. You got that? I think I got it there. And now I'm going to put a little bit on the superficial tissues. Again, this is just to sort of hopefully anesthetize some of this. You see where it blanches a bit. You okay? Mm -hmm. So 
So we aren't looking to do a large incision here, so we just want to get it to drain. And I warn residents to not be right over top of these cysts because they can get a lot of back pressure. And I've seen many residents who will actually shoot themselves in the face because of all the back pressure. How does that feel? Not too bad? Not too bad. So for this, I use a number 11 blade. It's the only time where I'll use a number 11 blade, just like this. Just going to make a linear incision. Now the incision to choice, we follow along Langer's lines. I should mention those. Those are connective tissue lines that dictate how well you'll heal. They run parallel to the muscle, so in the neck, they're actually horizontal. So you wouldn't do a vertical incision here, you'd do a horizontal incision. Okay. So that's the initial incision. Now you're going to get lots of pure in the discharge. So I always have lots of the 4x4s four ready because this is going to want to drain. Same thing here, can't see because I'm out of the film, but you'd want to make sure you're not right above the cyst or the particulate matter will shoot right up into your face. You okay? Now it would be nice if we could take the capsule out, but the problem with these is when it's infected, the capsule becomes thin and friable and it's impossible to take it out. So all we can hope to do is to get it to drain. Now sometimes I've found when we're repacking this, a couple of days from now, it's possible to get at the capsule and get that to come out. But right now that's not possible. And you'll feel less pressure with this Betty once we get all of this out. Trust me. I do. and you'll feel lighter too. So we're getting towards the end of it. And you can see how much less inflamed the tissue is already. And normally you can see a nice capsule. Here you can't because again it's so thin. I'm almost done here. So now it's not draining much. Now I'm going to be filling that with sterile gauze. This is packing gauze. Now when you're first filling this in, she's got some anesthetic in, so you can be a little bit less gentle with it, but certainly when you're doing the, the changes in subsequent days, you have to be a bit gentler with this. And on the first day, you want to put it in pretty firm, and you want to fill it up completely because it wants to absorb some of the residual bleeding and the residual um, purulent material. On subsequent days, you actually want to be putting in less and less so it has a chance to close up naturally. And you'll see that this will absorb a fair amount of this, this gauze. Because obviously that pocket is fairly large. Now, Betty, this has to be changed tomorrow. Okay. Now, this they will be, once I've done the initial incision, they'll be okay with changing it. So you just go to the clinic and they'll change that for you. You okay? Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. And this can seem to go on forever sometimes. I'm starting to get more resistance. You 
okay? I know the position's a little bit uncomfortable because you're on face down. this and then we'll put a dressing on it so you can stop if you like it was a small splinter on top of the nail what's tetanus